Shogun and Shigeet with the technique. I shoot up the whole competition. Yawn. And today we're back at it again with another segment of Is It Worth Your Money? Where we analyze the latest gaming technology and services produced by a single company to see if it's really worth the price they're selling it for. So without further ado, let's begin. This week's contender We are, you know, seeing the uh, dawn of new uh, industry. So it's not just for gamers, but it's also for, you know, literally everybody who is, you know, connected to the PlayStation brand. In some ways, the PlayStation VR reminds me of the Nintendo Switch. They both have great concepts and are both seen as great entry to the majority of the gaming community with endless possibilities. But to a lesser degree, even though these items have great potential, they are still overshadowed by their huge weaknesses, timing and deliberation, which I will come back to later on in this video. As of now, I'm going to give you guys a general technical overview of the PlayStation VR. The PSVR was released on October 13th, 2016 by Sony Interactive Entertainment and is now at a general retail price of $300, compared to its two biggest rivals, the HTC Vive being $800 and the Oculus Rift being $600. So as of now, the PSVR is at a very good price range as it's the lowest of the bunch. On the equipment side of things, in the box you get a PlayStation VR headset, a processor unit, stereo earbuds, HDMI cable, AC adapter, and power cord. Um, also you get a PSVR headset connection adapter and a recently placed PlayStation camera. What's not included is the PlayStation Move controllers, VR games, and obviously a PS4 console itself. So, if you had none of these items to begin with, you're looking at a cost between $400 to $600, excluding better deals or offers that may apply. On to the unique specification list, it has a OLED display, a 5.7 inch panel size, 100 degree field of view, a 6 axis motion sensing system, 3D audio processing, and so much more. For a full list of specifications, I suggest you take a look into the description below where a link is provided on the much more specific details of the product, or take a look at them as they scroll by on the screen. So, Geekish, what's up with the game titles you may ask? Well, so far Sony has some great titles including Job Simulator, Super Hot, Resident Evil 7, Farpoint, and Batman Arkham VR. Many gamers, including myself before E3 2017, thought that Sony had given up on their creation, but that turned out to be a complete and utter false decision as they showcased many games they were publishing and making, including The Inpatient, Moss, Skyrim, and Star Child. These games showed Sony wasn't giving up yet and that these games had a lot more to offer to the consumer. With that being said, some rivals of the PSVR had some spotlight too, as the HTC Vive had Fallout 4 VR and Mario Kart Arcade, as well as Oculus Rift with Transference and Echo Arena. Some drawbacks you may face with the PSVR is the old technology it uses mixed with the more up-to-date product. You can use a DualShock 4 controller just fine, but when it comes to the PlayStation Motion controls, it has the worst tracking ever in history, especially in a game where immersion is key. Your hands can jitter and move around a lot, making the overall setup a a little less effective. It's also a little expensive, so you should really consider all your bundle and deal options before buying. And to some of the gaming community, there still aren't any really big titles that are worth the expensive retail price, which goes back to my point before. The timing and deliberation of the PSVR should be one of the most main concerns. Just like the Switch, the PSVR needs time to grow because it has great potential. The, it's, it's, it's just the timing on this product. It, it's, it's giving it it the real drawback. Many more big hitters are probably coming to the headset soon and the process to which Sony makes the best outcomes and decisions are up to only two groups, the corporation and the gaming community. So at the end of the day, is the PSVR worth your money? Personally for me at this moment, no. It needs some time to grow and get bigger or probably get a bigger roster of games. That the gaming community cares about. For the average gamer, probably not, since they're probably going to play with it and then feel like they're going through the most grueling process ever with terrible motion controls. And as for the high-end gamer, the most probable answer would probably be yes, since they are interested and probably have the money and time to see its potential skyrocket and hopefully not fall victim like the PS Vita. <laughs> 
All right, that concludes another segment of Is It Worth Your Money? Follow me at Geekscape16. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because I make videos like this every Saturday. Thanks for watching, and see you guys later on the next episode. Bye, guys.